there are two main references for the course today. Um, there's my own book and there's another one, another book called um, <coughs> by Hanson, Schneiderman and Smith. And this is the Node Excel book. Uh, it came out in 2010 and um, it's, a, uh, it, it's an introduction to using Node Excel for studying social media. Um, I have a chapter in this book on hyperlink networks, um, <coughs> but half of the book is actually an introduction to social networks um, and also studying social networks and social, using, social, using Node Excel. So I think it's a very useful book. Um, I can talk with you in the break about how you might get a copy of that book because I don't know whether it's still in print. It probably is, but we can, I'll chat with you about that. Um, <coughs> there's another good reference for social media and uh, social network analysis, um, an online reference, um, Hanneman and Riddle. This is a more of a classic kind of introduction to social network analysis. There's nothing about social media here. Um, so the two of them together, I think, uh, make a really uh, good combination. <coughs> and there's also, in my book, I have some sections on social network analysis as well. So one thing that I think is very useful is to know about the network perspective. Um, this, is, this is a way of looking at the world that is different to the way other social scientists look at the world. So my background as an economist, I had a particular training in how, um, individual, how to study individuals. Um, an example is um, studying how people go in the labour market, you know, what wages do they earn, what is their occupational success. Um, the economist perspective is an individualistic perspective. It's about the individual's attributes. Um, it's the human capital model. The idea is that uh, when you're in the education system and when you're working, you are acquiring or you're building your human capital and that then is used or is reflected in you having particular earnings. You get a return to your education um, and, uh, um, which is reflected in, in wages. Um, the, the network perspective is very different because it's not, it doesn't focus, the attributes of, focus on the attributes of individuals. It focuses on how individuals are connected to other individuals and how your network connections can be a source of, can provide you with resources, for example, information or other types of resources and how those resources then provide both opportunities and constraints for people. And so the network perspective is it's a different way of thinking about the world and it's useful to go through it here. So there are five aspects to the network perspective. Firstly, as I just mentioned, the network perspective puts emphasis on the structure of relations rather than the attributes of individual actors in determining behaviour and outcomes. So I mentioned the economic approach, which is the human capital model. The SNA approach to, to, is a... Um, is associated with the work of Mark Granovetter, um, again a, a big name in sociology, his work on weak ties. Um, the idea there is he, he argues, and, and he has empirical evidence to back this up, is that it's um, not, when, when trying to understand how someone is achieving, uh, uh, how someone's labour market success, um, it's not, what's important is um, is their weak, the, the, the weak ties. So what I mean by weak ties is it's their connections that people have to other people where they don't share many connections in common. So it's acquaintances or people, you know, someone I know but, but we don't have lots of friends in common. That's what a, a weak tie is basically. Um, in contrast, strong ties are connections to people where you have lots of com friends in common. Um, and so... Uh, uh, a strong tie might be with a family friend or a, someone you went to school with or a family member, for example. And Mark Granovetter argued that um, weak ties are a source of strength and, and, um, and, and benefit in the context of the labour market because they allow people to, to gain access to innovative information um, that they can then use in a way to um, advance their careers. The second aspect of the network perspective is, um, is that it focuses on relationships between actors. So a pair of actors is known as a dyad. So dyads are the unit of analysis rather than the actors, of them, actors themselves. So this is reflected in, in the statistical techniques that are used um, 
in non-relational social sciences, so the sort of the standard economics approach, for example, and a lot of sociologists use this as well, is ordinary least squares or variants of that. And that's a, um, a hallmark technique of non-relational social science, where the unit of, the obs of observation is the individual. Um, in contrast, uh, a technique that's commonly used in social network analysis is exponential random graph models. We're not going to be going into this today, um, but I'd recommend if you want to go further than what's available in Node Excel and, and you collect network data and you want to take the next step in doing statistical analysis, then it, it, exponential random graph modeling is, is a very commonly used technique these days. Um, the unit of observation with exponential random graph modeling is the dyad. Okay, so that's a, a, a sort of a difference in the network perspective. Um, following on from that, while ordinary least squares assumes that observations are independent, so that means that the error term, for example, if I was doing a regression uh, to understand um, what factors contribute to a person's hourly wage, um, and I was using ordinary least squares as the approach, um, my dependent variable with, would be wa hourly wage or log, the logarithm of our hourly wage, while the independent variables would be attributes of the individuals. It might be their number of years of education, their gender, um, their English speaking ability in the context of the Australian labour market. And all of these factors would we'd be testing to see what impact they have on hourly wage. Um, but what we'd be assuming is that um, the error term in the labour market regression is independently distributed. So it, what it means is that my success in the labour market or lack of success in the labour market has no impact on the success or otherwise of another person who's in the sample. We're not, our, our labour market experiences are not connected in any way. In contrast, the network perspective explicitly assumes that observations are in, interdependent, not independent one from one another. And this is, um, <clears throat> can, can be seen quite easily in, a, in, in an example. So say we've got three people, Sally, Jen and Andrew. Sally and Jen are friends and Jen and Andrew are friends. So if we were to do this in a network diagram, it would look something like this. We've got here Sally. Um, this node represents Jen. Sally and Jen are friends, okay? And we're indicating that with a line between them. And say Jen, and we've got Andrew over here, Jen and Andrew are friends, okay? Now, if we assumed that dyads are, inter are independent, that would mean that the probability of there being a friendship between Sally and Andrew would be the same regardless of whether or not these ties existed. Okay. Um, the, the, fact, the existence of these ties would have no impact on the likelihood of there being a friendship between Sally and Andrew. And so do you think that makes sense from a social, sociological perspective? No? People are shaking their head. Uh, why, why do you think it doesn't make sense? Uh, I think they have the ties because they have the same possibility to make them to become friends. Yeah. Then if they don't have the ties. If they don't have the ties. And yeah, yeah. It's, it, if, these, if these friendships exist, there's a good chance that, that these two are people are going to be friends. And this is a sociological phenomena that's known as um, triadic closure. Or triads. Social networks, you're, you find lots of triangles in social networks. It's a, it's a, a, um, it's a fact of life. <laughs> okay. um, and if we don't account for that in our modelling approach, we are basically ignoring a very strong um, aspect of social behaviour. Okay, so um, uh, social network analysis specifically allows you to take these interdependencies into account. There are more than that. You know, the, you know, one triadic closure or transitivity, which is the idea that a, f a friend of my friend is also my friend, is just one example. Another example is reciprocity. Um, so if I um, so I'm, a, I, 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 you know, I'm at, a, at a party and I say, go up to Karen and say, oh, hi, I'm Rob Ackland. You know, yeah, so what's happened there? I extended the hand of friendship and to the extent that I'm not someone you know, scary or threatening, the, 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 the typical response is, 
the other person extends the hand of friendship back. Even though Karen didn't know anything about who I am, you know, or, or you know, my attributes were not important, it was simply that reciprocity is a social norm, okay? And it's got nothing to do with people's attributes, it's got to do with interactions between people. <clears throat> and again, this, that sort of interdependency, in social networks, you find a lot of reciprocated um, behaviour. You, know, it, you know, that if I've, for example, nominated someone else as being an expert in the field that I'm interested in, there's a better chance, ha my having nominated that person increases the likelihood that that person will have nominated me back, that there'll be a re reciprocation there. Okay, the fourth aspect of the network perspective is that it, Network, uh, it recognises that social networks can have both direct and indirect impacts on individual behaviour and outcomes. So what this means is that um, if I'm wanting to know how um, a social network impacts on a person's behaviour and outcomes, it's not just the direct connections that that person have, has that matter, it's actually how the people that I know connect to themselves. That's also important. And also, it's who else they connect to in the social network that's important. Okay? So it's, um, in terms of understanding the flow of information resor and, and resources, you have to actually be able to understand the entire so structure of the entire social network, not just the network of ties surrounding the person that you're observing. And then finally, people tend to belong to several overlapping social networks. Um, Individuals tend to be members of several groups and the group boundaries are often fuzzy and hence hard to define. What is a social network? Uh, this is a, terminology, a term that I've been using, I've used a lot, um, I haven't defined it. Okay, and now I'm going to give you, in eight or so minutes, I'm going to give you a, no, a lot of concepts and terms, and, but we'll have chance today to rev go back over them uh, and you'll be actually using them in the context of Node Excel. So <coughs> a network is a set of nodes I use the term nodes, I sometimes call them vertices, I never call them entities, um, and a set of ties, I sometimes also call them edges or links. So these are, these are terms that are, uh, at least I use interchangeably. Um, in a social network, um, the network nodes are people and the network ties are relations between people. I'm purposefully not really going into what I mean exactly by relations here, because I could spend the whole day talking about um, what qualifies, what type of relations quali um, are required for a interpersonal network to be a social network. Um, I would argue it's not just that, that um, not just any tie, it can't be just any tie, there has to be some sort of tie that leads to a, an amount, a certain degree of interdependence um, in the sense that my, I take into account the other person's action when I make a decision that might influence them. So the term that often gets used is social relations. And these are one-to-one um, -one connections and a, and, a, and a number of them, you know, multiplex one-to-one -one connections. We often represent social networks using what's called a, soci a sociogram. And this is an example of an early, uh, early, a, an early example of a sociogram from 1961, reciprocated friendships amongst girls in Marketville. So you can see <coughs> um, I showed you lots of network maps at the start of my, my, my presentation. Um, this is what network maps, how social, uh, social network analysts were drawing them, um, you know, when, the, when they started this work out. Um, they weren't using computers to, to, to arrange them, they were actually arranging them by hand. But in terms of the structure, it's, it's very simple, or the, or the, the um, aspects of the diagram, it's very sim similar. You have nodes um, being represented by different shapes. Um, in this case, you've got circles and you've got a couple of squares and a couple of triangles. Um, I don't know what this is, but I expect that pr probably refers to race. Maybe, maybe the, the, the circles indicate that they're white. Students and you know, the triangles and the, and the squares are um, you know, some other racial category. Um, <coughs> and then the ties are um, reciprocated friendships. <coughs> and you can see here clusterings. Interesting clusters. Okay. Um, this is a sociogram using Twitter data. Uh, we can do something like this in Node Excel, and I hope that we'll, we'll be able to do something like this today. Um, what, what this is showing is people who tweeted on a particular hashtag, which is the win 
09 hashtag. That was a conference. And um, the connections between them indicate that they follow each other on, on Twitter. So um, these are the size of the node is the number of um, tweets that they've ever made. Okay, so it's like their activity on Twitter. So can anyone tell me an, as, an interesting aspect of this diagram? What, 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 what is your immediate kind of reaction to this diagram? What's, what's an interesting structural feature of it? Karen? Yeah, that's right. So these, this, these two people, this person in particular, they're kind of spanning the, they're bridge spanners. You know, they're, they're, they would have high betweenness centrality, which is a particular network um, property or node property that we'll, we'll, we'll look at today. And immediately they, they look like interesting people in the sense that there are these two distinct communities. They, they don't seem to be acknowledging each other or talking to each other. However, these two are connecting them. Um, the fact that there are two distinct communities is also of interest here and that's a feature that a lot of work is in, in social network analysis is, is aimed at is identifying structure cl and clustering in networks. It's very strong here and I can tell you these are the social scientists and these are the computer scientists um, at this particular conference. That's Barry Wellman up there actually um, and I don't know who the rest of the people are but okay. Um, I'll, I'll skip over that, it's just another network diagram. Okay, so in terms of some n further network terminology, um, I've, I've described what a node is. Nodes may have attributes, um, and there are two types of attributes. Um, those that are related to the network, and these are, like, these are graph theoretic, and so these are attributes that are actually derived from their, the position of the person in the network. So one... Um, very common one is degree, so that's the number of connections you have. Um, but they can also be non-graph theoretic, so they've got nothing to do with the network. It's, it's to do with your intrinsic attributes. So gender of person, race, age, for example. Edges in a network can represent different types of connections. Um, collaboration, kinship, friendship, citations, etc. There are two major types of edges, directed they have a clear origin and destination. So Twitter user following another user, that's a directed edge. And it's directed edges are represented as a line with an arrow. They, don't, they may or may not be reciprocated. Undirected edges is where there's a mutual relationship with no origin and, or destination. So marriage, Facebook friend, that's also from the perspective of the researcher, that is a, an undirected tie. It's true that someone has to invite the other person, you know, someone has to be the first one to set up the invitation. But, in, but a, a Facebook friendship tie does not exist un, until that other person reciprocates it. And so from that point of view, it's a mutual um, relationship. Um, edges can also have weights. So you'll see in some networks that some lines are thin while other lines are thick. You know, and that's indicating the weight of the edge. Um, and, in, and the weights might reflect, you know, it can reflect anything really. Um, it might reflect, um, you could draw a Twitter network where an edge exists if, if one person is a follower of another person, but you could weight that edge on the basis of the number of retweets that that person has made. So say that's me there and I follow Karen, not S for Soldatic, Karen for Karen on, on, um, on Twitter. And so I follow Karen, so I'd indicate that as, we'd indicate that as a, a directed edge between me and Karen. But if I retweet her a lot, then we might make that, that edge, that edge would be represented as a thick line. But if I'd never retweeted her, then it would just be a thin line. So it's a way of attaching and it's a way of showing the, de the degree of the importance of the, of, the, of the relationship in the sense that if Karen's tweeting a lot and I'm retweeting her, um, then that indicates that I'm paying a lot of attention to what she's doing. Okay, skip over these. And there are also types of networks, and this is um, important terminology for what we'll be doing later. Um, there are two main types of networks, egocentric networks, um, or ego nets. 
So these are networks that consist of a focal person known as ego and the people he or she is connected to and they're known, they are known as alters. <laughs> this comes from psychology, yeah. I know some academics who Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I think we all do, yeah. Um, now, there are two important types of egocentric networks. A one degree ego net doesn't show connections between alters, while a 1.5 degree ego network shows connections between the alters. So, okay, giving an example here, and I'll sort of have to kneel. So, um, say that's me, I'm ego, okay, and say. I follow, on Twitter, say I follow Karen, okay, and say I also follow, um, um, okay, S Stephen Fry. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, but I could say, okay, Stephen Fry. Okay, so that would be my ego network, okay, if they're the only the two people who I follow. That would be my one degree ego network. Now, if it was the case that Karen also followed Stephen, then my one degree ego network would still look like this. But my 1.5 degree ego network would look like this. Okay, so 1.5 degree ego networks show the connections between alters. And I haven't got it up there, but there's also the concept of the two degree ego network, and that would be if Stephen follows. Um, Okay, uh, Kevin Rudd, okay, KR, okay, and I don't follow Kevin Rudd. So then, this is what's known as the friend of a friend, okay. Um, with Facebook, we can, we can, and I'll be showing you how to construct the 1.5 degree ego network. We can't construct the, one, the 2 degree ego network. Facebook won't allow us to do that. The idea of between us centrality in an offline setting, like a looking at an organisation and you've got a person who speaks to, uh, and this is just an example, the mark who, who, who speaks to the marketing department and speaks to the finance department and, and these two groups don't have much connections between the two but you've got one person who is connecting these two groups, then what Ronald Burt's research has shown is that these pe those people who, who occupy structural holes tend to have above average um, employment sort of you know performance like either wages or occupational success but it, it, you know from a that that's a finding but as to whether one of the big challenges with network research is 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 their causality there is it the case that they because they're sitting they're occupying the structural hole is that what's giving them the advantage or is it something about what's known as unobservable heterogeneity. Is there something about that person that makes them really good at their job and also make, allows them to know exactly who they need to know, you know in, in that organisation to, to, to progress? Yeah. He, he was looking at people who are kind of, you know, so it's a, it's a um, you know, he, does a lot, he did a lot of work on, with Wall Street um, finance, okay. financial companies. So they're all kind of like the same type of people, yeah. although even amongst them, I guess there are differences. But, and he's found that the ones that sort of occupy the structural holes or bri are bridge spanners, they, they do better. Yeah. yeah. Well, that was interesting. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay.